Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, in the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The elders of Israel being the apostles and the elders of great millstone that rule well. Shalom, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at your again with lesson, Baruch HaKodash HaMaf in the Holy Spirit of Truth. And uh, the topic of this video is going in on how affliction is beneficial. Affliction is beneficial. All right. And um, we're just going to hop right into it, man. I don't have nothing written out. Um, we're just looking for a lesson. And uh, that's what the Spirit gave me. So we're going to hop right into it. And Lord willing, this is edifying, uplifting, exhorting. We're going to let the Spirit do what it does. Let's start off with. Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter. What is it? Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So we have to go through affliction in order to be chosen. All right, there's no way around it. We have to go through the straight gate in order to inherit everlasting life. Okay, as it says in the book of Acts 14 and 22, Paul, Paul it said, confirming the souls of the let's just read it. This is the book of Acts, chapter 14. In verse 22, it says, confirming the souls of the, of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, through much tribulation, through much affliction, is how we're going to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Again, there's no way around it. It says that a city is set on a broad field and is set in a dangerous path. Water on one side, fire on the other. So narrow that only one can go in there at. That's, book of, that's the book of 2nd Ezra, the 7th chapter. But that city, all right, that's on that broad field. And the only way into that city is going through that danger is full of all good things. So it's a necessary evil. We have to drink of that, what did the Lord say? You shall surely drink of that cup. We got to drink of that cup, man. All right? The afflictions, the trials, the tribulations. It's purging us. Okay? It's refining us and preparing us for the times that we are coming into. There's a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes. I can't word it right now. It's not... Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes 7 and 3. It says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Sorrow is better than laughter. All right. Let's read that in the um, NLT. Ecclesiastes 7 and 3. It says, sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. We're being refined. Okay? Let's look up that word, refined. Which, that was written, that that would happen to the elect, to the ones that get delivered. Uh, as it says in the book of 2nd Ezra, not 2nd Ezra, Zechariah the 13th chapter. Okay? It says that the elect would be Tried as gold, refined as silver. They shall call on the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. They shall be my people and I shall be their power, saith the Lord, right? The word refined on Entom Online, it says, To bring or reduce to a pure state or a condition of purity as full as possible. Sheesh. Man, that's, that's heavy. That word's heavy. Okay, so it says that sorrow 
has a refining influence, meaning what? Sorrow is bringing us to our pure estate. Sorrow is, being, is bringing us to a condition as pure as we can be. Okay, again, I'm going to read it again. This is uh, Etam Online for the word refine, to bring or reduce to a pure state or a condition of purity as full as possible. Um, I'm just reading through to become pure. Free of impurities. So the hell that we catch, the trials and tribulations that we go through refines us, meaning it it frees us from impurities. The things that we go through, we have to learn. We must. That's very important. Everything that we go through, there's learning lessons in it. Okay? What I like to call teaching moments. Okay? Where we're going through something and it's the Lord. He's teaching us. He's teaching us to be more patient. He's teaching us to be more disciplined. To be more reserved. He's teaching us when to speak and when not to speak. Okay, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, it says there's a time for everything under the sun. He's teaching us timing and everything that we do. Okay? We're not just here to just, you know, uh, like my pops always say, don't just go through life. Grow through life. We have to be growing as we wait for the return of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And I'll tell you by experience, trials and tribulations, it really forces us to grow. It really forces us to grow in any particular situation that's, um, that's being demanded of us in, in them circumstances. You know, and it builds faith at the same time. Let's go from there to the book of Romans. Again, I'm just, I'm just freestyling in the spirit. It's the book of Romans chapter five and verse. We'll start at the top. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh through our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So y'all like to, uh, the IUIC, they call us bums. Okay, and they um, at one point they was trying to diss us and down talk us, saying that we're faith based, saying that the men of Great Millstone, starting with the apostles and elders, are faith based Israelites. Well, that's how we're going to be justified through faith. Okay, well, that's the only way to please Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is faith. Hebrews the eleventh chapter. That's how we're going to be saved. Ephesians the second chapter. I did a video yesterday on how faith is special. This faith that we have is special. This knowledge, this wisdom, this 100% truth that we have is special. And us having it makes us special as long as we hold fast to it until the Lord comes. All right. And as long as we overcome the trials and tribulations that we go through, he's going to make us a ruler over all his goods. Okay. It says, verse 2, it says, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of Yahweh. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience, experience. So he said we glory in tribulations. All right. Because that tribulation, it worketh. All right. We go through trials and tribulations because it's building up different aspects of our lives. It's building up our character. It's building up different attributes that the Lord needs to be on a certain level in the times that we're coming into. It says, but we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not to be ashamed, maketh not ashamed, because the love of Yahweh is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. That's heavy, man. The love of the heavenly. So this this how you know who the Lord, who the heavenly Father Yahweh, in her name was only begotten Son Yahweh Shai loves. The ones that have the Holy Spirit, all right. The ones who He gives His Spirit, His wisdom to. That's the ones who He loves. That's the ones who He cares for. 
He says, though a man be never so perfect in the eyes of men, if my wisdom be not with them, he shall be nothing regarded. The, uh, there's another scripture that says, the Lord loveth them that love wisdom. I hope I'm not butchering that too terribly. Let's see. I think I butchered that. Yep, nope, this is here, here we go right here. This is Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 28. For Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. And wisdom comes from above. He's given us this wisdom. Okay? Which means what? He loves us. And as long as we apply that wisdom, hold fast to that wisdom, this faith of ours, trust in his word. We're going to be able to get through any and anything. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, delivereth them out of them all. And that, again, like I said earlier, it builds faith. Going through trials and tribulations and you, you're trusting in the Lord. It looks bad. It looks terrible. It looks like there's no way out. But then the Lord makes a way of escape. That builds faith. That strengthens our relationship with Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. All right, if you don't get anything out of the hell that we catch, we at least that you gonna get that. You're going to get more faith when you brought through some hell. You're going to be stronger in the spirit when Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai bring you through some hell. Okay? Patience. Patience is something that always comes with that. Because you have no choice but to wait on Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai to make a way. Okay? So there's so many different benefits that we get. From catching hell, as grievous as it is. Okay, I might as well jump straight there now. In the book of Hebrews. This Bible that I got right now, my other two swords that I mainly use is in my is in my car. This this one's stiff. It's so stiff. I don't know why it's so so stiff. Let me just grab it in the um on my on my phone. Hebrews twelve. As shitty as it is to catch hell, to still be here in America, the Lord is building us up. He's perfecting us. Going back into that definition of refining. All right? To purify, to free from impurities. Right? Going back into that Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the third verse that we read, it has a refining influence. The sorrow of the heart has a refining influence. It allows us to see more clear. Okay, this is the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, I start at verse 6. It says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. So he's given us this wisdom because he loves us. But he also chastises us because he loves us. Okay, the Lord is a, a, a power of ba balance. Okay, so what comes with this glorious knowledge, this wisdom and understanding this faith is trials and tribulations, is chastisement. It says in the book of Sirach, if you get a friend, prove him first. In the book of Sirach, the second chapter says, My son, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. All right. Matter of fact, read that real quick. We are, I just quoted the first verse pretty pretty much perfect. Uh, verse 2, it says, Set thy heart aright. Sirach 2 and 2. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. So that shows you that. We practice patience in our time of trouble because we're not making haste. We're just waiting on the Lord, trusting in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai that He's going to make a way, that He's going to deliver us from the uh, situation, or He's gonna, just going to give us the strength to bear it, to endure it. Verse 3, it says, Cleave unto Him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Cleave unto Him, showing you that it makes us closer. It makes us closer to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai when we catch in the hell, when we really going through it. It makes us cleave tighter. 
all right, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. We get increased. We get increased in our trials and tribulations. We get increased in our temptation and our trouble and our sufferings and our sorrows. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lowest state. Take it cheerfully. Why? Because it's a sign of love from our creator, from our heavenly father, Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Take it cheerfully. Why? Because we know it's just the Lord increasing us, man. There's certain things I've been having to endure, you know, over the past, you know, year. We always been catching hell, but over the past year, it's been some real battles and, you know, it's just certain, certain attributes just grew automatically, you know, without even realizing it. And you realize it most when you're catching hell in another aspect or in another area, all right? Or it's different circumstances and, you know, a regular person, you can see a regular person gets, make haste, right? They make haste in a time of trouble. They start to panic, all right? They're unstable. But we, man, we begin some, oh, it says in the book of uh, Psalms, let me just read it. We begin all type of bad news, going through all type of random ass hell. Demons, but the Lord be keeping us cool, man. And it it, t it takes time to to get to that point. It takes time to you know have that uh that peace that to be calm in the midst of a storm. All right, in order to be calm in 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 a, in a storm, you gotta know you got you you have to them been through a storm before and delivered out of it. Okay, imagine when the disciples, they was on the boat with Yahweh Shai. They was on the ship with Yahweh Shai and the winds got boisterous. The waves was roaring and they was panicking. Yahweh Shai was in the bottom of the boat uh, asleep. So they rushed down to the bottom of the ship and they wake up Yahweh Shai and say, you sleep and we about to perish? Yahweh Shai said, oh, ye little faith. And instantly he stopped the, he stopped the wind and he stopped the waves instantly. Okay. And, and they was like, yo, what manner of man is this that even the waves and the sea obey him? But imagine the next time they was on the ship. It started raining. It's all cloudy, windy as fuck. In the midst of a storm, they was they had to be calm. They had to be more calm. Because they already they already been delivered out of a situation like that. Or even other situations. Okay? The Lord's on the ship with us. He's on the boat with us. And at any given moment, He can calm them storms. Alright? At any given moment, he can, he can stop them waves. The wind and the seas obey Him. Everything on this earth obeys Him. So when we catch a hell, just pray to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. He's in control. Pray to be shown favor. Pray to be shown grace. Pray to be shown love, mercy, forgiveness. Pray for strength. All right? Pray for more faith. Pray for the spirit to endure. And learn all this in Hebrew, man. In the book of Sirach, in the prologue of Sirach, it says it has more power when you read it in the, um, or that um, when you speak in the Hebrew, it has the most power. All right? Roughly, roughly paraphrasing. You know the prologue of Sirach. Baba Kosha, give me one second. I gotta, I gotta hop on Daddy, Daddy duties real quick. <sighs> Man, I did the same thing I did yesterday. I, I accidentally turned the um, video off instead of just pressing pause. But this cool. I know how to chop it up and doctor it. We'll put it together, I should say. But anyways. Back to where we was at, Salakia, for the distraction. Uh, back in this Romans. This is Romans chapter 5, and I'm going to read it in the NLT. This is Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. It says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Okay? 
our trials, our problems, the afflictions that we go through, it helps us develop endurance. And we have need of endurance, right? As it says in the book of Matthew, it says, He that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I remember what scripture I was going to get. Let me go and grab that precept for it. Lose my mind. This is uh, Psalms chapter 112 and verse 7. Uh, I started at verse 5. Psalms chapter 112 and verse, I started at 4. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. Woo! And there's, there's um, always light. Even uh, 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 when we're in dark times. Meaning, you know, the, the Lord always brings comfort even, even when we catch in hell, man. All right, he punished us less than our iniquities deserve. Lord be showing favor through the hell we catch. Okay, it says he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth and he will guide his, his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. Surely an upright man, a good man, right, shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Here's the point. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so the hell we catch, it builds up that faith. So even when we hear terrible ass news, which is evil tidings, right, bad news, we're not moved. Okay? Why? Because our heart is fixed. Fixed on Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Fixed. On trusting in him. So we hear certain things and it's like, man, we're going to get through it regardless. However, all right, we, you know, and you learn not to put too much energy into that shit. You, you learn not to put too much energy into things that we can't control. All right. And just use that energy and put it into prayer instead of being anxious and full of anxiety. Just ball all that energy up and, and put it into and put that energy into that, into uh, a prayer to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says the prayer of the humble pierced to the clouds. All right. It says uh, the Lord heareth not sinners, but those that do the will of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, him he heareth. So as long as we continue to do what Yahweh, the simple things that Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai has asked us, commanded us to do. All right. He going to always make a way to escape. He's not going to leave us nor forsake us. Okay. Man, I just forgot what scripture I was about to go get. Um. Anyways, we'll just read this Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. It says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. It's like it. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Alright, so affliction is... Um, building character, okay, building strong character, okay, afflictions, trials, and tribulations that we go through, it increases us, all right, uh, uh, in the attributes that Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai has delight in. Verse 5, and this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly Yahweh loves us, He, ca he because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. We know Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai loves us. Oh, that's First John the third chapter. What manner of love? What manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us that we may be called His sons? Okay, and He's given us His Holy Spirit. Which, if we have the Holy Spirit, that means we got one hundred percent truth, man. That I mean, if some if a camp you follow in a camp and they can't boldly say they had one hundred percent truth, then they don't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is not a spirit of lies, nigga. I mean, shit. It's that simple. It's that easy to understand, but it's plain out to the holy and stumbling blocks unto the wicked. So lock it. Let me drink some of this delicious ass watermelon juice. Does the body good? Okay, so let's go from there. Back to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, he chasteneth, 
and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Uh, let's read in the NLT. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. All right, some of the affliction teaches his discipline, man. All right, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good um, idea. All right, or not a good idea. I'm tweaking. My mind is kind of all over the place, Salakia. Not a good idea, but uh, a good analogy of certain things that we go through and how it builds. Let's just say you, your car fucks up, all right? And um, it, it'll teach you patience like we already been going. It could teach you discipline in a different aspect. Now you got to get up early, and now you got to ride your bike to work, okay? You know, probably not the best analogy, but that's just an example. And you gain discipline from that, man. And discipline is very key. The scriptures say that uh, whoever has discipline will be shown mercy. I would like to read that. This is uh, Sirach chapter 18 and 14. It says, He have mercy on them that receive discipline and that diligently seek after his judgments. So we, we have to have discipline, man. Okay? Otherwise, the Holy Spirit will leave. Right? This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. It says, For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of discipline, so we always need to be practicing practicing discipline, and discipline can be practiced and built in really any aspect, all right? In any aspect, our discipline, so food, the way you eat, all right, that builds discipline, waking up at a certain time, all right, that builds, having a routine, that builds discipline, Um, what else, man, just, you know, how... Having uh boundaries when it comes to when it comes to drinking. Alright, I'm not gonna drink that. That's build discipline. Hey, going to the gym, walking every day, like the apostle's been pushing, you know, that walking and just being healthy, intermittent fasting, fasting period, a full 24 hour dry fast or full 36, 48 hour, however, however you do it. All right, uh, uh dry fast that builds discipline in other areas, not just eating, you know. And it's something that we need, like we just read. But anyways, it's back in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6 in the NLT. For the Lord disciplines those who he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Okay, so we got to go through. I mean, shit. Sure. <laughs> hey, man, you got to get on your children. If you if you truly love them, you're going to cuss their ass out. Shit. Sure. Especially when they're young. You're going to be constantly on them. Okay. Verse 7, it says, If ye endure chastening, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai dealeth with you as with sons. Oh, the water. I remember what I was going to read. Um, the water, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. St. Thessalonians. Or Peter. This is the book of psh, Philippians is what it is. Philippians chapter 4 and 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Let's read that. Philippians. Let's read that in the NLT. What was that? Philippians 4 and 6. In the NLT, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, what you need, and thank Him for all He has done. All right, you keep going through trials and tribulations. We know that's the only answer. You begin to realize, look, as long as I just pray, <laughs> I, I mean, I'll get through it. No sense of worrying about something that I'm not in control of, something that I cannot fix. I'm gonna just pray to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shama fast to give you know that prayer more strength. All right, as, as the scriptures say, pray without ceasing. If it's truly really bothering me, I'm gonna just keep on praying about it. Keep on praying about it constantly. All right, Shame, shamelessly, which is what importunity means to beg shamelessly. All right, and the importunate woman, Luke 18, she got what she desired. Men are always to pray. And not to faint. Okay. 
Let's go back to Hebrews and I'm going to start wrapping it up. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to get straight to the point. Verse. Oh, wrong chapter. So I can. Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 11. Now, no chastisement for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness, that increase that Sirach was talking about. Peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. No, uh, so like I'm reading uh, NLT. This is Hebrews 12 and 11. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But... Afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. We are being trained. All right. They say no pain, no gain. Okay. We're being trained to be perfect rulers, perfect judges. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. So hey, hopefully this lesson is doing that. Hopefully, you know, somebody that needed to hear this is hearing this. Okay, and your hands is getting stronger and your knees is getting stronger. Meaning, you know, you're not feeling as weak or down in the dumps. And knowing that your chastisement, that your trials has a purpose to it. And there's an end to it as well. Okay, let's read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10 and verse 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Whatever you're going through, as hard as it seems, as bad as it looks, as painful as it may be. You're only going through that because you're able to endure it. It may not seem like it. You may not think so. But <laughs> the Lord is greater than our hearts. Okay. he, know, hey, My children, man, they be scared of, you know, certain shit. Like this bridge. There's this bridge I took them to. They were scared to walk past it. Uh, walk across it. I'm like, man, you, you got to go through it. <laughs> You got to go through it. And it's not going to be that bad. I'm right here with you holding your hand. I'm not going to let you fall off this bridge. Okay. I'll make sure you straight. And that's how the Lord is dealing with us. I, I, he got our hand. And he, he's walking across. He's walking us across this, you know, this bridge, this dangerous path, this straight gate. Okay. But he's not going to let us fall off the bridge, man. We're in his hands. All right. He going to cover us and protect us. Um, you know, you think about, you know, for the brothers that have children, you think about how overprotective you are about your children. How much more the father of his elect? And it's like I, you're good. All right. You, you don't need to be scared or you don't need to worry. I got you. You straight. Okay. Like, you know, I, I know you can get through that. And then that builds faith. That builds, right? Like with a child, it builds their confidence. At first, they were scared of, of going down the slide. But you pushed them, you pushed them, you know, not I literally pushed them, but you, you know, you built them up and you pushed them through that fear and, they, and that anxiety. And once they go down that slide, oh, that wasn't so bad. Now they built that confidence. All right. I can go through this. I'm stronger. I'm stronger than my trials. I'm start. I'm stronger than my afflictions. Okay. But it says, but Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. All right. So there, there, he he gives us the strength to bear it. <laughs> And then eventually he, he makes a, a way to escape. He gives us a little season. All right. The, the, for where that affliction goes away. And then it comes back and we go through another. Because this is training. This is the training grounds, man. We're not here to be comfortable. You can't grow in comfort. 
All right. Affliction. What's the title of the video? Uh, affliction. The benefits of affliction. I quote. I quoted the, the saying in the world: "No pain, no gain." You go to the gym. You you gotta get sore. All right. You gotta put in that work. You gotta break the mu meaning what? You gotta break the muscles down. You gotta break the muscles down, and then you build them back up, and you get stronger and stronger and stronger to the point where you like the pain. You start liking the pain because that means you're working. That means you're growing. That means you're building. That means you're getting stronger. In a moment, it hurts. It's painful. But then when you look in that mirror, you flexing, you seeing them cuts. It's like, man, I got to stay in the gym. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'll finish it off with this. So this is Sirach chapter 2 and verse 5. I'll read 4 again. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient. When thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. We got to go through the fire. We got to go through the afflictions. Going back into the first, ver or the first scripture that we started with. That... The Lord has refined us as silver and has chosen us in the furnace of affliction. But when I was edifying, uplifting, and exhorting, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechachorash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, Rechachorash, is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. The Thamash Nakabalaz, Chomish Arsharalik, that were honest, that was the visual being the apostles, and the elders, a great millstone, that were well. Shalom, Wahab, Labach, Yarsharalik, which is peace and love to elect the visual. Shalom Amachim, brothers keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draweth nigh, and redemption is near than we believe. Shalom.